App Switcher. Close broad. Music, Entertainment, Utilities folder, 19 apps. What App Switcher has no items. App Switcher. Social networking folder, 8 apps. Social net ut enter game game games folder, 120 opening games folder. P page 1 of page 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 4 page 5 page 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 11 of 14. Page 12 page 13 of 14. Page 14 of 14. Affairs. Broadsides. Broadside. Play. Button. Play. Fire the The world turns upside down as the cannons roar as it fire. Show stats. Button. Fire the starboard broadside. Shouts the captain. Cannons roar as each. M. S. Courageous attacks the enemy frigate. As one of the junior officers, really, more of an officer in training, you command three guns on Courageous's main gun deck. The guns of the battery next to yours fire, leaping back against the heavy ropes that prevent them from smashing across the ship. Clouds of whites, the captain yells out, fire as the guns bear. You give your gun crew's orders to load and fire as quickly as they can, without waiting for the rest of the broadside. They swab out the bore, push in a char, the captain yells, Cap T. Tango. Can the captain yells out, fire as the guns bear. You give your gun crew's orders to load and fire as quickly as they can, without waiting for the rest of the broadside. They swab out the bore, push in a charge of powder, push waddling down on the powder, load the shot, push the gun out through the gun port, and fire the cannon, with you commanding each step of the process. Swab, powder, waddling, shot, fire. The world turns upside down as the enemy's broadside rips through the hull some ten feet away. Next, button. As the enemy cannonball tears through the side of the ship, giant splinters of wood fly through the air. One of the splinters, perhaps a yard long, rips through the stomach of Davies, a sailor under your command. A fragment of a cannonball smashes Fisher's arm, mangling him horribly. Your sailors seem stunned by the carnage, standing in shock while Davies and Fisher- What do you do? As- What do you do? Attend to the wounded personally, the safety of my sailors is my top concern, radio but- Give- With- My duty to the ship- Next, button. While the battle rages around you, you rush over to Davies and Fisher. Their wounds are both bad, even with your prompt assistance, they may not live. Still, you can help, and you do, bandaging their wounds and personally taking them to the surgeon in the cockpit. As you return to your station, you see a frown on the face of the lieutenant in command of your broadside. Not all officers would be willing to prioritize the wounds of sailors in the midst of a battle. But what else could you do? Next, button. We should take a moment here to establish a few important facts about you. In this game, you take the role of a young officer in the Royal Navy of Albion, an imaginary nation rather like England, fighting battles at sea with Gaul in the time of the Napoleonic Wars. But you're not just any young officer. Nobody knows it yet, but you're going to be one of the most famous officers in all of Albion. The Naval Chronicle will publish stories about you, sailors will tell tall tales of your adventures. One day, if you're lucky, people will write histories about you. Why? What makes you so notable? My skill in sailing ships, radio button, checked, one of four. My combat ability, both commanding the guns of a ship and with pistol and sword, my leadership, people instinctively follow, my high birth gives me, next, button. As an officer, you are first and foremost a warrior, defending Albion with your skill in battle. What's your second most notable quality as a young officer? My skill in sailing ships, radio button, my leadership, people instinctively follow me, radio button, unchecked, two of three. My strong patronage within the Royal Navy, radio button, un next, button. Maintaining discipline and keeping the crew inspired, even in the face of death and destruction, is an essential part of an officer's duties. Your leadership will serve you well. That tells us what you're good at, but you can't be perfect. What's your greatest weakness as an officer? My skill in sailing ships, radio. I am without a friend or relation anywhere in the upper ranks of the Royal Navy. Ah, next, button. You will always have to be twice as able as your fellow officers to receive the same opportunities and respect they habitually get. Do you lead by knowing the correct action or by reading the people around you? Do you sail? Definitely my intelligence, radio button, checked. Do you lead by knowing the correct action or by reading the people around you? Do you sail? Definitely my intelligence, radio button, mostly my intelligence, but I'm also likable, radio button, unchecked, two of five. A lip, mostly my skills with, overwhelmingly my, next, button. Remember, you'll do better as an officer if you avoid situations that strain your weaknesses and pursue strategies that play to your strengths. Next, button. This game is set in a fictional world. For example, I'm a young gentleman. I'm a young lady. I'm a young gentleman, of course. Checked. I'm next, text field. Next, button. Of course, of course. The officers and crew of a Royal Navy ship are all men. Let's move on. You are about 19 years old now. When did you first go to sea as a midshipman? When I was three, radio button, checked, one of, you are, when I was three, rad, when I was ten, radio button, when I was thirteen, radio button, when I was sixteen, radio button, unchecked, four of four. Next, button. Sixteen is late to begin an apprenticeship as a midshipman. Your professional skills have suffered as a result. On the other hand, you've received a better formal education and training in the social norms expected of a young gentleman than most midshipmen.
We'll need to know your surname. Smythe, radio button, check, brown, radio button, baker, radio button, unchecked, th I don't like any of those names, radio button, unchecked, f baker, brown, smythe, radio button, check, brown, radio button, unchecked, two of four, baker, radio button, unchecked, I don't, next, button, a very respectable name, in light of your class, of course, what about your given name, Henry, radio button, Richard, radio button, William, radio button, Edward, radio button, Horatio, radio button, unchecked, five of six, something else, radio button, next, button, excellent, as the game begins, your officer may be described as follows. Name, Mr. Midshipman Horatio Baker. Age, 19. Sailing, 42%. Gunnery, 69%. Leadership, 50%. Fighting, 80%. Patronage, 30%. Tact, 39%. Likeability, 51%. Honor, 38%. Courage, bloodthirst, 25%. Intelligence, 70%. Wealth, 10%. Next, button. With that out of the way, let's get back to the battle. You've dealt with the injured, in a fashion. Now, you need to keep firing your guns. But in the midst of all the excitement, swab the bore, radio button, checked, want, whip, swab the bore, radio button, ram in the powder, radio button, unchecked, place the wadding on, ram in the powder, radio, place the wadding on the powder, radio, low, run out the gun and fuck, I have no idea. Next, button. The gun carriage bounces on the hull of the ship. The gun is ready to fire. At the last second, however, you realize that something is wrong. When you're met, it's embarrassing, the gun carriage bounces on the hull of the ship. The gun is ready to fire. At the last second, however, you realize that something is wrong. When your men rammed in the shot, it didn't go as deep into the bore as it should have, a fact you noticed because of your high gunnery. You must have It's embarrassing, but it could have been much, much worse. You give orders for your men to insert the screw and to clear the load from the gun manually, and after a delay of a few minutes, you are able to return the gun to service. The lieutenant commanding the broadside noticed, however, and your patronage suffers slightly. Next, button. The battle rages on, but finally the gauntlet ship holds down its colors and surrenders. In the aftermath of the battle, a young midshipman runs up to you. Captain's compliments, sir, and he asks you to report to the quarterdeck. When you get to the quarterdeck, the captain looks over at you. Mr. Baker, I'm rating you as an acting lieutenant. Take a section of 20 men across to the prize and assume command. Make any necessary repairs and set sail for any Albionish port. Aye aye, sir. Thank you, sir. You quickly gather your men and head across on your first command. Next chapter, button. As you prepare to leave Courageous, you run into Mr. Bryce, the second lieutenant. Well, 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 acting lieutenant Baker, he says, grinning widely and slapping you on the back. I know you'll do smashingly with your first command. I have the utmost confidence in you. Thank you, sir, you reply, touching your hat in salute. Just at that moment, First Lieutenant Pie got rounds the corner. Mr. Baker, he remarks, somewhat stiffly. Fine piece of luck you've had. Pie got, with over 25 years experience, is by far the most senior lieutenant on board, perhaps in the whole fleet, but it's not to his credit. He's too incompetent to earn a promotion to commander. He's watched countless younger, more competent lieutenants pass him by, while he racks up years of valuable experience. All he has to show for it is the power to boss the other lieutenants around imperiously, and he rarely misses an opportunity. Luck has not a bit to do with it, I say. Bryce counters cheerfully. Well, go on then. Don't want to keep the prize waiting. Aye aye, sir. Next, button. You make your way across to the prize ship with your attachment of 20 men. You are the only officer, but you have Jones, a master's mate, with you as your second in command. The Gautla ship is a 36-gun frigate, a square rig three-masted ship with an ordinary crew complement of some 250 men. Your attachment of 20 will be sufficient to sail the prize, of course. Worship, the long and the short of it is that you can fairly easily sail the frigate, but your prisoners outnumber you roughly 10 to 1, even taking into account the substantial losses they took before striking their colors. As you arrive, you quickly send some of your men to bring the prisoners below and to lock them in the hold, where they will spend the rest of the voyage. Next, button. You always learn quickly, and you picked up a, a gautlish officer, show stats, but a gautlish officer, no more than a few years older than yourself, approaches you and offers his sword in surrender. He addresses you in gautlish. You always learn quickly, and you picked up at least a smattering of gautlish. You may not understand everything he says, and your accent is assuredly abominable, but you are fully capable of making yourself understood. I believe you are the officer of the prize party, sir, he says. Do you deign to respond to him in Gautlish? Yes, anything else would be churlish and unworthy of a gentleman. Radio button, check. Check, yeah, no. I may have the upper. Yes. He may not understand my language and it will be useful to open com Yes, anything else would be churlish and un- Check. No, no. We Next, button. Unchecked. I suppose, normally, I would, but given how few men- I suppose. He's probably less dangerous after giving his parole than in the hole trying to escape. Of course. He- Do you accept loot? He nods. I understand. I am- I am- Show- Broadsides. Show- I am- Acting Lieutenant Horatio Baker of H. M. S. Courageous. I am Lieutenant Bill New of the Gautlish Republican Navy. During the battle, the more senior lieutenants were all killed, and the captain suffered a wound that incapacitated him shortly after we struck our colors. I am now the senior active officer of this ship. I understand, sir, you reply. You understand that we now command this prize? He nods. Alas, I do. I offer you my parole, sir. With that, Villeneuve has promised not to seek to escape, and not to interfere in your efforts to steer the ship. Do you accept Lieutenant Villeneuve's parole? Of course, he is a gentleman and would never think of breaking his word. Radio button, checked, one of four. 
I said, Norm, he is a captive and what? Next, button. Of course. I accept your parole. You hand his sword back to him, producing a grateful smile. I trust you will join me in the captain's cabin for dinner. With pleasure, sir. Thank you. Next, button. How do you respond? Jones approaches you a short while later. So that's it then, sir? The bloody Gaul spends hours trying to kill us. Does kill a lot of... How do I explain myself to Jones? Radio button. Checked. One of three. Jones, how dare one of my ratings question my decisions? Next, button. I understand that it hurts, Jones. We all lost friends today. But there are rules about how wars are fought. We may not like the rules, but we still have to follow them. You yes, sir, says Jones, although it doesn't seem that he does. But why should we trust their officers but not their men? Because I know that Lieutenant Bill Newf has been taught for years that nothing is more important than his honor. He would rather die than, if you say so, Next, text field, next, button. A few days later, Lieutenant Bill Newf comes to you with a question. Sir, he inquires, may we have access to some additional medical supplies? A member of our crew has suffered a compound fracture, without further, provide medical supplies, radio button, checked, one of two. Deny, next, button. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You seem to be getting along with Villeneuve handsomely. Next, button. The next several days pass smoothly. You get used to the routine of the passing watches, even with the new experience of commanding the prize ship. The process of trimming the sails, taking your bearings, and setting the courses, nerve dash racking dash dash never before have your decisions been the final word, leading a ship either on a safe and direct course to your destination or towards disaster. But the weather is blessedly easy, with a steady breeze but clear skies, and you go through the process, relying on your training and your experience. On the fifth day, Joan comes to you with a disturbing piece of news. I found something below deck that I need to bring to your attention, sir. What is it, Jones? We're taking water in the hold. We missed the hole at first because it's beneath the waterline. Sure enough, he's right. You order your crew to start pumping out the water. With Jones's help, you manage to patch the hole in time to prevent any further damage to the ship. Why do you think Jones pointed out the damage to you? He did it out of duty. Radio button. Checked. One of three. He, di he did it to save his own neck. Radio button. Next. Button. Perhaps you're right. Next. Button. Perhaps you're... Next. Button. On the sixth day, one of your men calls down to the deck. Sail to leave. What sort of ship is it? You call back, as you search with your spyglass. After a minute, the sailor calls back. She looks to be a godly sloop of war, sir. A sloop of war. How do you want to handle this? Engage the enemy sloop directly. Radio button. Checked. One of three. Attempt to capture the enemy sloop through a clever ambush. Radio button. Avoid the enemy sloop. It's not worth risking the more valuable prize in a battle that would likely go badly. Radio button. Unch. Next. Button. O attempt. Engage the enemy. Attempt. Avoid the enemy sloop. It's not worth risking the more valuable. Checked. Checked. Attempt to capture the enemy sloop through. Check. Engage the enemy sloop directly. Radio. Checked. Attempt. Of. Neck. Text field. Next. Button. Set a course to engage the enemy sloop and run up our colors. You order. This is madness, sir. Exclaim. How do you react? Order Jones to his station and otherwise ignore his outburst. Radio button. Checked. One of four. Smack Jones down and continue with my battle plan. Radio button. Unchecked. Two of four. Ma the more I think about. Next. Button. Your fist catches Jones completely unaware. He sprawls to the deck. If you question my orders again in the face of the enemy, I'll have you hanged by the neck until dead. You growl. Do I make myself clear? I, sir, Jones manages to spit out, clutching his jaw. Good. Now get to your station at the lead gun of the starboard broadside. I, I, sir. There, that showed him. Now to give the Gautlish a similar taste of your metal. You try to ignore the panic looks on the faces of the rest of your men. As your ship and this loop close with each other, you time the order to open fire with the guns carefully. Your small crew has had the time to load the entire starboard. Finally, you decide that the moment is right. You bring the ship around in a tight turn, presenting the starboard broadside directly towards the enemy sloop. You run from gun to gun, giving the order to fire each one as it bears on the enemy sloop. Next, button. As the cloud of smoke from your broadside clears, you can see that the Gautlish sloop is damaged, but not badly. The sloop answers your broadside with one of its own. Its guns are light, but splinters still kill three of your men. The enemy captain seems to have understood the situation and maneuvers to board your prize ship. Now for the moment of truth, do you rally your crew for a desperate melee, hoping to somehow prevail despite being badly outnumbered? Do you strike your colors and surrender, or do you try to flee despite having brought your ship deep within the enemy's range? We will never surrender while we still live. Radio button. Checked. One of three. Checked. We did. Escape is our only hope. Next. Button. Escape is our only hope. Make all sail. Radio button. Uh, next. Button. You do your best to rally your crew, but it's obvious even to you that they are unwilling to fight and likely to die against overwhelming odds. As the Gautlish borders cross over from their sloop to your prize ship, you fight. Next. Button. You spend the next several years in a Gautlish prison. You are not mistreated, precisely, but it's still a terrible experience. Finally, after years of waiting, you and your men are exchanged for some Gautlish prisoners. You finally return to H. M. S. Courageous, only to discover that the captain has removed your status as an acting lieutenant for failing to deliver the prize safely home. You resume service as a midshipman. Next chapter, button. You return to your duties as a midshipman on H. M. S. Courageous. The days pass much as before. You study under the ship's master, you run errands for the officers, and you command your small section of men in routine tasks. As a year passes, you have the opportunity to practice various skills that you expect to be tested on in the lieutenant's examination. Which of your skills do you devote the most effort to training? 
Sailing, radio button. Gunnery, radio button. Fighting with sword and pistol, radio button. Leading the man of the ship, radio button. Unchecked, four of five. Currying favor with my superiors. Next, button. An excellent choice. Next, button. Finally, it is time for your lieutenant examination. You dress in your finest uniform and head over to a ship of the line, H. M. S. Dreadnought, where a board of captains has convened to examine a plethora of acting lieutenants and midshipmen on the finer points of naval skill. Those who pass are promoted to lieutenant. Those who fail must spend at least another year at sea before trying again. After an interminable wait, your name is called and you present yourself to the trio of captains. They take a perfunctory look at your papers and then launch into the examination. Captain Fitzroy, a middle-aged captain with a particularly hard cast to his face, begins questioning you on gunnery. How many ounces of powder should be loaded into a long eight? You stammer for a while, before one of the other captains cuts in and gives you the correct answer. He then launches into another question that you stumble through. After ten minutes of agony, the captains confer privately and then inform you that you have failed the examination. It is with a bitter heart that you return to H. M. S. Courageous as a midshipman. If you had a little more patronage, you would have passed. Four years pass before you finally pass a subsequent examination. Next, button. The responsibilities are much greater, and your duties have changed significantly. Where previously you were often on deck as an assistant for the officer of the watch, you now take your turns as an officer of the watch. Your duties studying under the ship's master have completely ended. And where you previously commanded a small group of guns, you now command a broadside. Next chapter, button. Ten minutes before eight bells, sir, the quartermaster reports. A steady breeze pulls your ship inevitably west, bound for Kingsport. Very good, you say. Pipe the watch below. The first lieutenant, Mr. Pygosh, arrives promptly to relieve you of your dog watch. I relieve you, Mr. Baker. Aye, aye, sir. I stand relieved. Good night, sir. Good night, Mr. Baker. Not long after, you find yourself lying in your cot, drifting off to sleep. Soon, you begin to dream. Next, button. You find yourself sitting for your lieutenant's examination. Three gigantic captains are looking down at you with terrible grins, larger than life. Good day, Mr. Baker. My first question to you is as follows. You are in temporary command of a 36-gun ship, returning to Albion with maximum haste. The wind is with you, and you are at full sail. The barometer reports a sudden drop in pressure. What do you do next? I don't know the answer. I'm going to fail the exam. Radio button. Checked. Stammer install for time. Radio button. Make something up. Radio button. Unchecked. Three of four. Admit that I don't know. Radio button. Next. Button. Cut holes in the sail to maintain speed through the weather. We're about to be cummed. Prepare oars for rowing. Radio button. Unchecked. Cut. A strong wind is coming. Didn't you just ask me this question? Radio button. Ch you are in temporary command of a 36-gun ship. Here is your next question. The second captain says. You are in temporary command of a 36-gun ship, returning to Albion with maximum haste. The wind is with you, and you are at full sail. The barometer reports a sudden drop in pressure. What do you do next? Didn't you just ask me this question? Radio button. Checked. One of five. A strong cut hole. We're about to be. Oh no. Oh, next. Button. This is our final question, the third captain says, disapprovingly. You are in temporary command of a 36. A storm is coming. Furl the sail to avoid disaster. Radio button. Checked. One of four. A storm. A storm is come. A storm is come. Next. But text. Next. Button. Mr. Baker, you have officially failed this lieutenant examination. This is the worst performance I have ever seen in an act. You awake with a start. Next. Button. Drowsily, you can hear Pygot call the watch. It's midnight. The ship is heaving erratically. As you yawn deeply, your ears pop. The pressure has changed. Fall back asleep. Radio button. Send word above deck. Radio button. Unchecked. Two of three. Go up. Next. Button. You call for a midshipman, still only partly dressed. Yes, sir. He asks. What word should I send? Tell Pygot to furl the sail. Radio button. Checked. One of three. Ask. Never mind. Radio button. Next. Button. You may want to think twice before sending a message like that to a superior officer. Pygot's the first lieutenant. He's the officer of the watch right now. Are you sure you want to send this message? Yes. Do it any. No. Never mind. Radio button. Checked. Next. Button. No. Never mind. Radio button. Checked. Next. Button. I, sir, says the volunteer, with some confusion. Go back to bed. Radio button. Go above deck personally. Radio button. Unchecked. Two. Check. Next. Button. By the time you get yourself dressed and on deck, you find that things are already going to hell. Last night's steady breeze has become a gale, you feel the mist of rain on your cheek. Mr. Baker, says Pygot, greeting you formally. It's hard to see clearly, but you think, tell Pygot to furl the sail. Radio button, checked. One of th Go back to bed. Next, button. No, no, no. You can't just tell Pygot what to do. He's your commanding officer. To hell with protocol. He could get us all killed. Radio button, checked. One of three. For politely ring up the Next, button. What did you say to me, Mr. Baker? You there, Pi got growled, I sir? The major, the captain will hear of this. Return, go back to bed, radio button. Wake the captain, radio button, unchecked. Next, button, wake the captain, radio button. Next, button. What's your plan, exactly? If Pi got won't listen, I'll have to go over his head, radio button, checked. I can spin this better if the captain hears from me first, radio button, unchecked, too. The captain could appear at any moment, if I delay him, I may protect Pi got from trouble, radio button, unchecked. Next, button. 
The, the captain could appear next button. You may not get your chance. Just at that moment, Captain Kent appears from his cabin. Captain on deck, yells Pygot. Just then, Jones falls from the riggings of the missus and mast. Another sailor reaches out to catch him. The wind shrinks and the ship groans and leans precipitously. You hear pop as someone's arm dislocates. Before anyone can say a word, both sailors have fallen to the deck, one of them killed instantly on impact. The captain takes over from here. Next chapter, button. After breakfast, all the officers of the ship gather together in the captain's cabin. Pi Got takes a moment to turn to you and hiss, what were you trying to do last night? You have no opportunity to defend yourself before the captain calls for everyone's attention. My question for you, Mr. Pi Got, the captain says, is, why were there still men on the riggings when the storm arrived? I could see from on deck that Master's mate Jones hadn't reefed the sail correctly. R the captain counters, Jones says that you gave the order. With all due respect, sir, Jones is an insubordinate and unskilled Master's mate. Support Jones, radio button. Ch support Pi Got, radio, stay out of it, radio button, unchecked, three of... Next, button. Pi Got continues, caught up in his own blustering, I gave the order the moment the wind picked up and the rain set in. And not when the barometric pressure dropped? As, there is a brief silence, as everyone, I gave the order at the right time. He insists, banging, I'm sure he did the best he could, under the circumstances, you suggest, but his best was simply not good enough, and Bryce pipes up, Jones is still under the care of Dr. Miller. Very well, his punishment will be postponed until such time as Dr. Miller agrees to allow it. You are dismissed. Once you're both out of earshot, Pi Got leans in to whisper to you, mark my next button. As soon as he's able to walk, Jones is laid out for 20 lashes. Pi Got has the boss beat him as hard as he can, he's immediately returned, show, as soon as he's able to walk, Jones is laid out for 20 lashes. Pi Got has the boss beat him as hard as he can, he's immediately returned to the surgeon's care. Later that night, a midshipman wakes you from very deep sleep. Mr. Pi Got's compliments, sir, and he's passing the word for you. Because he is senior to you, you have no choice but to report when he sends for you. You stagger out of bed, quickly pull on your uniform, and make your way to the deck, where Mr. Pi Got awaits you with a nasty smile. Mr. Baker, did the weather change at all during your watch? Yes, sir, you reply, as clearly as you are able, the wind changed twice during the evening. At the end of my watch, the wind was favorable. Very well. You are dismissed. What an odd question. Couldn't he have gathered this information from the log? Next, button. You find that you're a bit tired the following day. You find it difficult to avoid yawning disrespectfully, but you're in the Royal Navy, you can manage it. Next, button. But two days later, Pi got wakes you up again, in the middle of your sleep cycle. How many times did you throw the chip log to measure speed? He asks. Ah, three times, sir, you slur. Come again, Mr. Baker? Sir, I said three times. I see. Mr. Baker, in my opinion, you appear to be inebriated with rum. Sir, no sir. It's almost three bells. You're exhausted, but you're not drunk. Well, I'll see to it that this won't happen again. You're not to have another drop of rum until my order, is that clear? Aye aye, sir. You are dismissed, Mr. Baker. Pi Got wakes you again three days later, to ask whether the captain gave you any standing orders that he should be aware of as the next watch standing officer. And again two days after that. Next, button. Mr. Pi Got wakes you at least once every two or three days for the next three weeks. Sometimes he takes the opportunity to lecture for an hour on the importance of respect and good discipline on a ship. He's doing everything in his authority to make your life hell. The following evening, you catch yourself nearly falling asleep on duty, an offense punishable by death. Try to apologize to Pi Got, radio button, checked, one of f ask me. The following evening, you ca try to ask Mr. Bryce what to do about this. Try to apologize to Pi Got. Ask complain directly to the captain, radio button, tough it out, radio button, unchecked, four of four. Check, next, button. Next chapter, button. As you head below deck, you see a handful of sailors whispering together. As soon as they catch sight of you, they stop abruptly and go their separate ways. What do you think they're whispering about? It's harmless gossip, radio button. They're planning a mutiny, radio button, unchecked, next, button. Do you plan to do anything about it? Show stats, button. Broads, home, back button, home, back, do nothing, radio button. Tell someone about the whispering, radio button, uh, do nothing, radio button, unchecked. F next, button. Next. I suppose a few sailors gossiping is nothing to worry about. Next, button. I su show stats, button. I next, button. On deck, you encounter a most unusual sight. The sky is pouring icy rain. Mr. Pi Got is wrestling with two sailors on the edge of the deck. They are trying to push him overboard, they are trying to murder him. Another sailor is on deck, watching the fight, but not involved. You're pretty sure he hasn't noticed you yet. Save Pi Got's life, radio button, checked, one of two. Return, next, button. You yell to get the sailor's attention, they hesitate in their wrestling match. One of them slips overboard as Pi Got regains his footing. Realizing that the plan has failed, the other sailor relents as Pi Got backs away from the edge and orders the remaining mutineers locked up. Under the testimony of both lieutenants, the remaining mutineers are convicted by a speedy court martial consisting of the captain and the lieutenants. They hang from the yard arm at dawn the following day. You get a full night's sleep that night. Next chapter, button. The tropical sun is hot even through your hat, and it glares painfully off the water. Through your stinging eyes, you can see looming up ahead the cliffs of a little island, a tiny place, uninhabited according to the charts. About half, more sail, the captain commands. 
Immediately, the men jump to obey, feet pounding on the deck and shouts echoing from the rigging. Canvas snaps and billows overheard. But you can tell it isn't enough. The little goblet ship is faster under the light wind, and has too great a head start. Next, button. I do not think we can catch her, you say quietly to Bryce. We must catch her, Bryce replies, before she gets much nearer shore. We can't manu ever courageous in those shallow waters. And, indeed, before very long, the cap- Mr. Bryce. Mr. Baker. The captain's voice cuts through your reverie. In my cabin, if you please. Next, button. There are two ships, so our force will be divided into. Mr. Bryce, you will command one half. Mr. Baker, you will command the other. Ix, few lieutenants get such a chance to prove their capabilities. So how are you feeling about this? Thrilled. I have been waiting for this sort of opportunity for a while now. I have... Deter... Terrified. Next, button. That's the spirit. You give serious thought to how you will organize your men, and then we will take two boats. You explain. The men grin. You pause. You know that one of the three officers, cutting the cable is the most important job. Ascending the rigging. Steering the cap. Next, button. Once we are aboard, I shall cut the anchor cable to release the goblet ship from- Mason pales slightly, but nods. Mr. Midshipman Stewart, it shall be your task to make your way directly to the wheel, and steer- Aye aye, sir, Stewart says, now, you men, you'll each be provided with a pistol and a cutlass. Before dismissing them, you think over the plan, is- Next, button. Oh, yes, of course, you nearly- The next few hours pass nervously, as you go over your plan again and again. Finally, four bell sounds, and you hasten to the deck to take command of your party. Along the way, you encounter Bryce, who seems a little nervous too. All in readiness, Mr. Baker? He asks. Yes, sir, Mr. Bryce, you say. You've set someone to climb the rigging and loose the topsail. Yes, sir. And there's an officer responsible for the steering? Yes, sir. You told the men to keep their damn pistols half cocked until you give the word? All we- Yes, sir, I've told them. Nicely done, Mr. Baker. You seem to have- To you too, sir, you set- Next, button. The oars skim smoothly over the water, and the men obediently keep quiet. You can feel your heart hammer in your throat as the great dark shapes of the goblet ships loom overhead, and you hope your hand doesn't shake on the tiller. It is your responsibility to get the boat close enough to board the merchant vessel, without letting their lookout see anything. You hope your sailing ability is up to the task. Next, button. Sweat pours down your face as you navigate up close to the starboard side of the pistols cocked. You order in a whisper, it's time. Do you lead, or do you order Stuart to lead so you can supervise the men as they board? I am the officer in command, and I won't ask anyone to do what I will not do myself. I lead, radio button, checked. I need to be sure that my men undertake their duties correctly. I order Stuart to lead. Check, next, button. Mr. Midshipman Stuart, you whisper, lead the way, if you please. Stuart takes a deep breath and stands. Follow me, he whispers to the men, and catches hold of the chains. The men follow Stuart, silently at first, and then shouting once they are over the side of the ship. Next, button. The fight is well underway by the time you make it up to the deck, a mass of struggling Albions and Gauls. You cut to the left and the right with your sword, shouting as loudly as you can. At first, the Gauls scatter before you, but then they begin to regroup. One rushes you from the left, and you turn and plunge your sword into his chest. He falls, but there's another diving in from the right, closing fast as you struggle to extricate your blade from his dead shipmate. What do you do? I use all my strength to wrench my sword free, and then I turn and fight. Radio button. Checked. One of three. I can't waste an instant. I- There isn't enough time to turn. Next. Text field. Next. Button. With one huge convulsive effort, you pull your sword free, and whirl to confront your new opponent. You barely get your blade up in time to block his swing, and your entire body shudders with the impact of steel on steel. This all is a very good fencer indeed, and for many long seconds, your entire attention is consumed with the effort of parrying. Then fortune smiles upon you, the gall slips on the bloody deck. Just for a moment, his defense is weakened, and you take advantage of that moment to strike the sword from his hand. Then you plunge your blade into his heart. You turn your attention back to the task at hand, fighting your way through the mass of bodies to the cable. You have almost reached your goal when you find your way blocked by two massive, angry gulls standing shoulder to shoulder. If Mason falls, his task will go uncompleted. On the other hand, what do you do? I am confident in my ability to win any sword fight, even two on one. And it is my responsibility to see to the safety of those under my command. Checked. Mason. Next. Button. Mason's attacker drops like a stone. Mason looks over, Y dash I dash dash then gives you an awkward nod of thanks and scrambles to his task. You, meanwhile, turn back to see two large gulls with drawn swords charging at you. You howl an incoherent challenge and rush to meet them. Steel clangs against steel, and pain scores across your left leg as one of the gulls lands a blow. You are not fighting by any honorable rules now, but desperately for your life, at last you pummel your way through the mass of bodies to the anchor cable, and hack through it with your sword. The goblet ship is drifting freely now. You look up, and pick out Mason's dark figure, very high up in the rigging. As, you turn back to the fight. In no time at all, gulls are surrendering all over the deck. You take prisoner those who still live, get the prize underway, and take her safely back to Courageous. Next, button. Bryce's prize beats you there by no more than a few minutes. You and he meet on deck, and he looks as flushed and giddy as you feel. You reach over to shake his hand, and he squeezes yours warmly. Brilliant. The captain says in approval. Very nicely done indeed, the two of you. He orders you and Bryce to take command of your prizes and sail them to Albion, adding, with a smile, that he would be much surprised if you did not each receive a promotion to commander. Next, button. And indeed, the Admiralty promotes you to the rank of commander. It is a proud moment indeed when you first walk down the street in Chesterport with an epaulette pinned to your left shoulder. And now you are eligible to command a sloop of your own, and to receive the courtesy title of captain. Well done, Captain Baker.
Next chapter, button. You experience the greatest thrill of your life when you step onto the deck of your first command, H. M. Sloop Hotspur. You are very pleased indeed by what you observe there. She is a gleaming almost new sloop that reportedly handles like a charm, crewed by good men obviously accustomed to working well together. A plum command, particularly for a new commander such as yourself. That night, you dream of all the fine things you will do now that you have a sloop of your own. Next, button. In the morning, you wait to a general hullabaloo on the dock and in the streets of Chesterport. Peace has been declared between Albion and Gaul. Oh, the details are not yet finalized, but documents have been signed and hostilities suspended. Before you know it, you find yourself once again in front of the captain who commands the port, but this time, to hear the unwelcome news that Hotspur is to be paid off. That is, decommissioned. The Admiralty won't have need of such a large fleet in peacetime. Your career has, for the moment, at least, vanished in a puff of smoke and diplomats. Next, button. Might there be any chance of another command becoming available, sir? You ask deferentially. The captain grimaces. I, how are you feeling about this? Pleased. It will be nice to have a holiday, and I can manage quite nicely on half pay plus prize money. I am resigned. I serve the Navy in whatever capacity they require. I can be patient. Surely it won't be very long before... Ner Next, button. A perfectly understandable reaction. One day some weeks later, on your way back from drawing your half pay, you run into your old friend Bryce. Baker, what good luck to meet up with you. You must come and dine with me tonight. I want to introduce you to my wife. You enjoy the meal very much. Mrs. Bryce is a charming hostess, gracious and sweet and well-mannered, and Bryce is obviously devoted to her. After dinner, you and Bryce sit drinking rum and storytelling long into the night. Suddenly Bryce says, So what about you, Baker? High time you got married, isn't it? You consider the idea. What do you conclude? Bryce seems to have stumbled onto a good thing. It might be. Bryce is right. Marriage to the right kind of woman could be very useful as I try to advance in my career. Radio button. Uncheck. Marriage? The idea of a wife has never held any appeal for me. Next. Text field. Next. The idea of... Next. Button. You agree that maybe marriage would be a fine thing if you could find the right person. The assembly rooms are crowded. Suddenly, a voice you know cuts through the chatter around you. Mr. Baker. You turn, astonished. It is Lieutenant Bill Anouve. Next, button. He is not wearing the uniform of the Gaublish Navy, but it is unmistakably the same man whom you met aboard a Gaublish Prize some time ago. The years since have treated him well, his skin is more weather-beaten, perhaps, and his scar seems as... How do you respond? Mr. Villeneuve, what a surprise. Radio button, checked, one of two. What, next, button. It is a surprise to see you as well. His Albionish comes more easily than it did when you first met, though it is still heavily accented. Though I do acknowledge the surprise must be much more great on your side. R respond in kind. Villeneuve is a man of honor. There, proceed, pretend to respond, put this presumption, next, button. So it does, you say. You raise your wine glass. To civilization, civilization, Villeneuve agrees, and raises his back. More quietly, he says, you treated me with great respect when I was your prisoner, and I have never, before you can respond, a young, fair-haired Albionish man emerges from the crowd and touches Villeneuve's sleeve. He begins, Clarence wondered if you wish to join us at whist, this is my cousin, Mr. Christy Polly, I agree. I am curious, I, I decline, next, button, I decline. I decline, next, button. You somehow don't feel like going into the details of your evening with Bryce and Mrs. Bryce. You are evasive when they ask you later if you met anyone interesting at the assembly. Next chapter, but next chapter, button. You put on, you spend a little time getting your bearings. So you put, well, Bryce says, several days later. We didn't get very far with finding your wife. The, you put on your uniform, shine your shoes, and accompany Bryce and Mrs. Bryce to the supper party. The two modest rooms are crowded with people. You spend a little time getting your bearings. Some people, as you wander through the rooms, you can't help but notice that many of the young women look admiringly at your unit. Next, button. Three in particular catch your eye. At next, button. Bryce chuckles. You've got a good eye, Baker. The woman by the window is the most eligible youngster for miles. Miss A the redhead is Miss Susanna Musgrove. And the little one sitting over there is Miss Beatrice West. As so? Bryce looks at you expectantly. To whom do you ask to be introduced? Miss A Miss, Miss Next. Text field. Next. Button. Next. Regale Miss Hawthorne with tales of my life at sea. Radio button. Unchecked. Three of three. Next. Button. May I fetch you a drink, Miss Hawthorne? You ask. She agrees, with somewhat distant politeness. You get her some punch, and she takes the cup from you with the same detached courtesy. It must be most exciting to live your life at sea, Mr. Baker, she says, but not in a tone of genuine excitement. Have you had many thrilling adventures? Thus prompted, you tell Miss Hawthorne every story you can think of from your time at sea. Initially, she responds politely, but eventually her attention wanders, and at last she gives up any pretense of interest or courtesy. Too late, you realize you are boring her. You try to recover by asking her about herself, but she gives only brief replies and looks at you as little as, Next, button. I'm sorry. That's unfortunate. What do you do now? I ask Bryce for an introduction to Miss Musgrove. Radio button. Checked. One of four. I ask, I go and join a group of gentlemen who are look- I sulk and drink- Next, but- I sulk and drink too much. That'll show her. Next, button. Bryce performs the introductions. This is my young friend Horatio Baker. A most up-and-coming young officer, let me tell you. He most particularly desired to make your acquaintance. Miss Musgrove looks at you. How very nice to meet you, she says. The pleasure is all mine, you say. Bryce winks at you and drifts away to talk with someone else. What do you do next? Ask Miss Musgrove to dance. Radio button. Checked. One of three. 
Ask Miss Musgrove to be my partner at whist. Regale Miss Musgrove with tales of my life at sea. The pleasure is all mine. What do you do? Ask. Ask. Regale. Next. Text field. Next. Regale Miss Musgrove with tales of my. Next. Button. May I fetch you a drink, Miss Musgrove? You ask. Oh, yes, please. She says. I am most awfully parched. With all that dancing. Silly, isn't it? To wear myself out like that. But people keep asking me. Isn't it nice of them? So what am I to do? I do so need to sit and have her. You find a chair for her and fetch her a cup of punch. Miss Musgrove's eyes go wide as she notices your scars. Oh, were you wounded in the king's service, Mr. Baker? She reaches out and puts her hand on your arm in a manner that is not quite inappropriate, but certainly a little forward. You must tell me of your heroism. She can How do you feel about her obvious fascination with your- It's quite flattering, really. Radio button. Checked. One of three. It's- I- Next. Button. Quite right. Miss Musgrove listens to your tales with shining eyes. What a jolly life you must lead, she says, and then she blushes. Oh, how dreadful of me. You won't tell anyone I was speaking slang, will you? She looks up at you in appeal. Of course not, you say, smiling. Miss Musgrove smiles back, and then blushes again and looks down. Your heart starts to beat fast. The two of you spend the rest of the party together, talking, and as you leave you hear some murmured surprise that Miss Musgrove never did return to dancing. Next, button. You look like you were having a good time, Bryce says with a grin as you head home together. Are you going to call on her tomorrow morning? You should, you know, if you mean to truly go according. If you call on Miss Musgrove tomorrow morning, it will be seen as an expression of serious interest. Are you ready to plunge in? Yes, I know what I want, and I'm going to go get it, Rick. No. Thinking it over more carefully, I decide that I do not want to seriously pursue marriage with Miss Musgrove. Radio button. Um. No. I like Miss Musgrove, but... I'm just not sure she... Check. Next. Button. You do not make any morning calls the following day. And by not seizing the moment, you miss your chance. Although you meet Miss Musgrove at other parties, she is always in the company of someone else. You never have the opportunity to attempt to rekindle the friendship of your first meeting. The peace with all does not last. Before long, hostilities have resumed and the Admiralty is building back up its Royal Navy to combat the gaudish threat to the freedom of the seas. The letter arrives by special messenger, very early on a cold morning. You slit the seal. Your orders are written in fine black script on heavy, cream-colored paper. It reads, you are requested and required to assume command of H. M. Sloop Defender. Your own command at last. Next chapter, button. At the crack of dawn, you walk to the end of the long pier, where you first catch sight of H. M. Sloop Defender. It's... It's no better as you find yourself standing on the dirty, uneven deck, introducing yourself to your first and only lieutenant. Welcome aboard Defender, sir, says Mr. Benton proudly. Finest sloop in the Navy. His uniform looks as if he put it on in the dark. You promptly draw out the orders from the Admiralty placing you in command of H. And when you finish reading your orders aloud to the crew, you are officially the new master and commander of the sloop. Next, button. Out of the corner of your eye, you spot a familiar sailor, Master's Mate Jones. Ah, he greets you with a respectful salute. Next, button. Captain Baker, sir? Says, a post-captain would have a sailing master. Mr. Carter, you reply, make the aye aye, sir. You inspect Carter carefully as he readies the sloop. Next, button. The shakedown maneuvers are embarrassing. You sail the sloop around, clear for battle, and fire off a broadside. The sails are not all taut, it takes long. At this point, you believe that, overall, the crew is fairly unhappy and poorly disciplined. You're going to have to turn this sloop into a credible fighting vessel. To do that, you'll have to put the men to work. It looks like this crew isn't particularly used to hard work yet. Where do you want them to focus their efforts? Drill them on crack, clean the sloop completely, radio button, uncheck, next, button. For day after day, you drill the men on gunnery. You clear the sloop for action, run out the guns, and blaze away with both broadsides as fast as, after hours of non-stop gunnery, you vary the pace for a bit, floating several empty barrels past the sloop. Your gun captains practice their aim as each gun fires at the target. After several days of this brutal regimen, you see real improvement. The men are more alert, quicker in responding to the changes you order. And the speed of your broadside has improved, with the reload time, after hours of, after, keep working them as hard as they can, radio button. Let's take it easy for na next, text field, next, button. What task do you turn to next? N text next button. Practice what? Show stats button. What task do? Practicing sailing maneuvers. Radio button. Clean this next text field. Next button. For day after day, you drill the men on sailing. You hoist all sail, then send the hands aloft to lower and reef the sails. As soon as the last top man is back on the deck, you send them back up to unreef and spread the sails again. You tack into the wind, rapidly switching your sailing points and drilling the crew on switching tacks. After several days of this brutal regimen, you see real improvement. This l you believe that next button. Yes, you're working the men hard. They go to sleep sore, they wake up sore, they do a long day's work, and they do it all again the following day. You're not sleeping so well yourself, in fact, as the night watch pounds on the deck every night while you're trying to sleep. They roll cannonballs on the gun deck and stomp their feet. You quickly begin to suspect that they're doing this intentionally, to torment you. It's a difficult crew, sir, volunteers Mr. Carter. Many of you punish the whole crew harshly, radio button. Identify the worst sailors and punish them, radio button. Uh, punish lightly, radio button. Don't punish at all, radio button. Next, button. Don't punish at all, next, button. If I perceive any one of you to be behaving with contempt toward your superior officers, you explain, all of you will be punished equally. The entire crew gets double work duty, worse, you cut them off from rum completely for about a week. This doesn't win you any congeniality points with the crew, some of them are really starting to hate your guts. F discipline increases, but happiness greatly decreases. Next, button. 
One evening, you head below deck as some of the men are taking dinner, you find Jones telling a body joke about the lascivious habits of women in London. He tells it quite well, you had chastised Jones for behavior on becoming a sailor, radio button, have Jones whipped, radio button, keep an eye on him, but do not tell a body tale of my own, radio button, next, button. You can talk all you like, but nobody can stop Navy sailors from telling body tales. At this point, you believe that, overall, the crew is very unhappy yet reasonably disciplined. Next, button. A few days later, Mr. Carter brings you a landsman sailor whom he found asleep on watch. Terribly sorry, sir, he mumbles groggily. Whip him soundly, radio, arrange a question, put him on double watch, and forbid him, let it slide, radio button, uncheck, 404. Next, button. Oh, thank you, sir. Just this once, you warn sternly. If I catch you asleep again, I'll hang you from the yard arm by your genitals. Aye, sir. Thank you, sir. Unfortunately, this really sends a bad message to the other sailors, who quickly get the idea that with a little pleading they can get away with almost anything. Happiness increases substantially, but discipline decreases greatly. Next, button. As you head below deck, you see a handful of sailors and midshipmen whispering together, including Jones. As soon as they catch sight of you, they stop abruptly and go their separate ways. You experience, loudly ask what they were whispering about, radio button, checked, one of five. Pull one of them aside to ask what they were whispering of, whip them soundly, Rid use a spy to find out what they were to, do nothing, radio button, next, button. Walker, green. Aye sir, they respond in unison. What were you whispering about just now? Walker and Green turn and look at each other blankly. From around the corner, Jones turns to look. Sir, ventures Walker, we weren't whispering. I was just asking Walker which shift he's on, blurts out Green. Let them go, radio button, Ch threaten to whip them, to get a straight answer, radio button, unchecked, two of four. Ha arrange a quest, next, button. Don't lie to me, boys. Sir, protests Walker, no, sir. Green, I'm giving you one chance to come clean and tell the truth. Lie to me again and I'll have you both lugged, or worse. The sailors look at each other in terror. Sir, says Green finally, we're telling the truth. Let them go, radio button, whip, tr next, but, tr whip them, radio button, uncheck. Try to have them hanged, radio button, unch, next, button. Whipping is not a very good cure for mutinous intent. Their eyes see raw hatred as they receive their lashes and return to work. At this point, you believe that, overall, the crew is fairly unhappy and poorly disciplined. Next, button. There are definitely some bad apples in the crew. Next, button. Next, button. Text, neck. I'm not yet sure. Radio button. Un absolutely not. This was, of course. Do you think it was? The next day, Mr. Benton reports that Mr. Carter has died in a fatal accident. Fallen down the hatchway, sir. He must have overbalanced. Do you think it was really an accident? Of course. Radio button. Checked. One of three. I'm not yet sure. Next, button. What else could it be? Really, just thinking about other possibilities. But then, perhaps you should be nervous. Happiness increases, but discipline decreases substantially. You are now in the difficult position of selecting a new acting master. Mister, there's McDougal, the senior mate. Then, there, of course, appoint, appoint, restore, neck, text field, next, button. A few nights later you awake with a start, to the sound of shouts and clanging metal outside your cabin. You swing up out of bed, grabbing for your sword, just as a team of armed sailors breaks down the door. They are led by Jones, whose face is twisted into a sneer. Not so powerful now, are you? He says score, do you? I can't win. I throw down my sword. Radio button, checked, one of two, ne next, button, never, radio button, unchecked, t next, button. Get him, boys. They seize you and drag you up on deck. But when you shout for help, some sailors immediately come to your aid. One of them presses a sword into your hand. Looking around, you can see that the mutiny is just getting started. You rally the loyalists and assess the tactical situation. Though parts of the crew were unhappy enough to risk their lives to kill you, notwithstanding your efforts to build discipline. For now. Next, button. Next. For Alvin, you yell. They follow you as you charge back down the deck, no longer fighting defensively but now actively attacking anyone. Next, button. From around the corner come a contingent of mutineers, some of the ones who broke into your cabin, and some others. They stop when they see your party of loyalists. You stop too. Your two groups glare at each other along the deck. Light listens off the blades of their cutlasses. What do you do? Bluff them into surrendering, radio button, checked. Charge down the deck and engage them directly, radio button. Grab a pistol from one of your loyal men and start shooting from here, radio button, unchecked, three. Next, button. Without bothering to speak, you snatch Cartwright's pistol and fire at the closest mutineer. He falls, and the others come charging up the deck. Your loyalists meet them squarely, and then the battle is engaged. A bullet rips through your shoulder, and your vision contracts with pain, but that doesn't stop you. Shouting and slashing, you fight mutineers for control of your command. Next, button. The battle is long and bloody, but in the end, the loyalists are victorious. Easily a dozen men have died, and a further two dozen more are unable to work, but with that show of force, you have put down the mutiny and re-established control of your sloop. Next chapter, button. H. M. Sloop Defender continues her cruise. On a bright and clear day, you come into sight of a Gaulish merchant convoy, with no apparent warships to defend it. There are a dozen Gaulish merchant ships in all. How do you plan your attack? We stay to windward, planning on picking off the Gautlish, we head to the middle of the convoy. We want to get as many ships in cannon range as quickly as possible. We sail to leave the convoy, with the wind pushing them towards us. Next, button. 
You snap off orders, closing with the Goutlet convoy and running up the ensign of the Royal Navy. The Goutlet ships begin to scatter, hoping that you will have to chase one or two and allow the rest to escape. Defender's crew responds to your orders well. The men are not the most disciplined crew that you have ever served with, but they are adequate to the task at hand. You maneuver the sloop well, overtaking one Goutlet ship after another, and a barrage of cannon fire at the Goutlet sails cripples your prey. Inevitably, most of the merchant ships escape, but you capture five of the enemy. You have a next chapter button. I ask, I make no requests. The current first lieutenant will serve admirably. Radio button. Next, text field. Next, button. Mr. Stewart is available, and the Admiralty orders him to report to H. M. S. Dauntless. He is young for the post, but enthusiastic in shaping up to be a fine officer. Your frigate, H. M. S. Dauntless, sails into Kingsport Harbor. Kingsport is the principal harbor city in one of Albion. Shortly after your ship makes port, while you are overseeing the process of taking on new supplies, the signal midshipman runs up to you. He touches his hat in salute and says, Signal from the flag. Admiral's compliments, captains of Dauntless, vigilant, and intrepid, please come to the flagship at your convenience. Acknowledge the signal and inform the officer of the watch to have my boat prepared for immediate departure, you reply. When in, within a minute, your boat is lowered over the frigate's side. Upon your arrival, smartly dressed sailors and a marine on her guard pipe you aboard H. M. S. Indomitable, the Admiral's flagship. The flag lieutenant touches his hat to each of the arriving captains. Sir, if you will please accompany me. The Admiral is waiting in his stateroom. Next, button. The three of you are shown into the Admiral's stateroom, a surprisingly large cabin for a warship, with a large heavy table set in the middle. The Admiral is in late middle age, his youthful vigor long since having given way to a prosperous roundness. His flag captain murmurs each of your names as you enter. The Admiral pours a glass of port for each of you and clears his throat. As you know, one of our principal responsibilities on this station is protecting Albion's merchant shipping. The foodstuffs and raw materials from these colonies are vital. The Goutlet frigate has recently made port on Blue Island. Blue Island is a possession of Jutland and thus still neutral. Next, button. You startle slightly at the name of Lynx's captain, and the Admiral raises an eyebrow. You know of Villeneuve, Captain Baker? Our paths have crossed a few times, sir, you reply guardedly. All the better. I'm assigning each of you the mission to hunt down Lynx. You are to me. I am also well aware of the fact that a 44 gun frigate is significantly more. You quickly ret- How can you fight him? It is a duty like any- I dragged fighting him, but it is still my d- Sure, next, button. Have you no humanity? Still, that will make this easier. You sail H. M. S. Dauntless into position, north of the main port of Blue Island, but out of sight of the port. Staying on a spec- You pull out your spyglass and look at each ship. The ship to- But the ship to starboard is a warship. You can't be certain at this range, but that- What do you do? There is no glory in taking merchant ships as prizes. Oh, uh, do- I- I can't really be- Next, button. Set a course for the ship to starboard, Mr. Stu- Stay at range and fight a gunner- Lee, next, button. You set a course to take you towards Lynx as quickly as- Despite your best efforts, however, Lynx keeps you at medium cannon range. Don't- Next, button. Thus far, you've given as good as you've gotten. The battle- It will be hard to maintain the battle as a gun reaction, you'll have- Which will it be? I've done- Next, button. Captain Villeneuve pursues you doggedly. Lynx handles- Next, button. You set course back for Kingsport. Upon returning to Kingsport Harbor, flags immediately signal for you to report to the Admiral on H. M. S. Indomitable. The Admiral listens grimly to your report. We did our best, sir, you conclude. Perhaps you did, perhaps you did, the Admiral replies. The Admiral nods, as if he has been making up his mind. We will see what the court-martial concludes. I have decided to proffer charges against you for failure to do the utmost to destroy the enemy. The court-martial is in many ways the worst experience of your life. Mr. Stewart testifies in the court-martial. He seems to be trying to be both truthful and helpful to you, but his testimony is fairly damning. You have never had much support in the rest of the Royal Navy. The board of fellow captains that makes up the court-martial votes to convict you, and you return to the court to see your naked sword position point first toward you. The court-martial sentences you to be discharged from the Royal Navy in disgrace, never again to serve on one of His Majesty's ships. Old friends and colleagues shun you, but at least they spare you the ignominy of execution. Next chapter, button. With that, your adventure comes to an end for now, Mr. Baker. After all you sacrificed for the Royal Navy and to serve Albion, they still discarded you like some moldy sea biscuits. Most of your friends from the Royal Navy ostracize you, treating you as unworthy of even greeting. You find some work to live on, but the work is intermittent. You spend much of your time experiencing crushing poverty. Next, button. Your final statistics are... Name, rank, made post-captain, 30... Closing games folder. Screen recording in progress, button.